Hey there, this is a podcast on the other two senses, the sense of smell and the sense of taste. And I link these two together uh, because they are pretty closely related. In fact, um, here's a, a great diagram, great cartoon of someone who is a little under the weather. Uh, but I want to point out, oh, I want to point out the uh, stuffy nose over here. Um, so when we're sick and we have a stuffy nose, what usually happens is we lose our sense of taste for a while. And that's because 80% um, of what we are actually tasting is uh, done through the work of our smell receptors in our nose. So if our smell receptors can't get that message, um, you're not going to be able to taste it. And so that's what we experience when, we're, when we have a cold. There's a lot of pretty interesting things uh, going on with this sense of smell, so let's look at it in more detail. Now just like in the ear um, with the organ of corti and the special hearing receptors or the eye with the rods and cones and the retina, the sense of smell has its own special smell receptors or odor receptors and they're called the olfactory receptors. So here you can see um, down here is our olfactory receptors. This would be like the nasal chamber, the open area, um, and so they kind of hang over the edge. And um, just like in the rods and cones, this kind of even looks like a rod or a cone, that message, which is going to be dissolved in the air, that odor, is going to be absorbed by the olfactory receptors and then that triggers an action potential to begin and so that action potential gets sent along the olfactory nerve and then if we jump up to this other diagram here you can see that olfactory nerve doesn't have a very long trip to go um, to the brain to be interpreted in the smell portion of the brain. What's kind of interesting to hear about the sense of smell not only does it really control a lot of what we taste, but it's located really close to a portion of our brain called the limbic system. And the limbic system is in control and maintains um, some of our emotions. And so oftentimes senses of smells or particular smells or odors um, can trigger particular emotions in our memories um, from the past just because the proximity of those two regions of the brain. Now let's move on to the taste sense, um, and again, there's special um, receptors for taste, and they have special names. I mean, those taste receptors are located in something called papillae. You can see those papillae down here, these ridges. Inside of those papillae are lots and lots of gustatory cells our taste receptors. So if we zoom in on one on this other picture, here's a taste bud. And within here you can see all the gustatory cells. And what will happen, again, they'll um, get triggered by a, a chemical dissolved in the food that we eat, or chemicals. And that signal will get propagated through an action potential all the way up to the taste center of the brain. And here you can see that the taste center is located very closely to um, the sense of smell, where, or where smell is interpreted. So again, you can see how the two are linked. Now if we look at the arrangement of those gustatory cells, um, you'll see here kind of the general layout of those flavors, of those tastes. Um, here's this, the newest taste that scientists have discovered called umami. It's a savory um, taste often found in, in Asian dishes. Uh, and, and the reason I say it's the newest taste to be discovered, the taste sensation has been around forever, but um, scientists just recently found the special gustatory receptor that pairs with that. And there's a, one final thing I want to leave you with here with these different taste areas. Um, so you see that sweet is up here at the tip of the tongue. That's not to say that there are not sweet receptors over here or over here, it's just that they're probably a little more concentrated here. They're found all over your tongue, not just at the very tip. So that's a really brief introduction to the two senses, and I hope you found that helpful.